family of flowers, who had a tough time making ends meet. So they decided to go to the bank and request a loan. Hey, welcome to our scene on the fluoroquinolones represented by these flowers over here. These are the flowers, and they're going to request a loan from the bank. So flowers requesting loan for fluoroquinolones. Let's begin our scene by talking about the various different types of fluoroquinolones that we want to be aware of. So leading the group over here, we see this flower holding the mug. He always holds mugs because he loves sipping. In fact, the family calls him the sipping pro. He's a sipping pro. Sipping pro for Cipro. Ciprofloxacin. The floxacin part we can remember because almost all the fluoroquinolones end in floxacin. So sipping pro for Cipro, Ciprofloxacin. Next behind him we see this ox who's always eating. Eating ox for enox, enoxacin. Then comes this guy over here. He's always holding the Norwegian flag. The Norwegian flag for nofloxacin. Behind him, oh boy, this guy over here, bugs always bother him, they're always annoying him, and thus he always has this off spray with him, so off for ofloxacin. Then behind them is this wagon over here, because the family always tags along this wagon with them, and conveniently for us, there are these squishy lungs in it. Maybe this is a family souvenir from somewhere, maybe from some anatomy lab, I'm not sure. But the lungs help us remember that in this wagon over here are the respiratory fluoroquinolones. What we mean by respiratory fluoroquinolones are the newer fluoroquinolones which have been shown to be effective against hospital acquired pneumonia. And this is because their effectiveness against strep pneumonia. But anyway, let's take a look over here uh, next to these squishy lungs. We see the gem over here. There's this beautiful gem, this green gem for gemifloxacin. On top of the gem there's this mask, a mask for moxifloxacin. But then there's this levitating O. I don't know how it's levitating, but it's a levitating O. Levitating O for levofloxacin. So just to review, the fluoroquinolones that we want to be aware of are ciprofloxacin, enoxacin, norfloxacin, ofloxacin, as well as the respiratory fluoroquinolones, gemifloxacin, moxifloxacin, and levofloxacin. Okay, now that we got those down, let's talk about the mechanism of action of the fluoroquinolones. So take a look up over here. We see these race cars over here that are made of ice. They're made of ice and they're always flying on top of people. So these are the top ice race cars, the top ice race for short. They're the top ice races, top ice races for topo isomerase. And if you'll note, the drivers in these cars are not people. In one is a shoe. In our videos, shoe is always for two. So topo isomerase two. And in the other one, there's a door. Door in our videos is always for four. So top ice race, four for top ice race, four. As the family of flowers was walking to the bank, these two cars exploded. This helps us remember that the mechanism of action of the fluoroquinolones is inhibition of top ice race two and top ice race four. And because topo isomerases are really important for DNA replication during prokaryotic mitosis, inhibiting these enzymes prevents the prokaryotic mitosis. And that's what makes the fluoroquinolones bacteriocidal. So again, the method of action of the fluoroquinolones is inhibition of prokaryotic enzymes topo isomerase 2 and topo isomerase 4, thus inhibiting prokaryotic mitosis. Okay, now that we spoke about mechanism of action, let's talk about clinical use. And for that, we're gonna take a look at the bank itself. So the first thing we note about the bank is that there is this ear on the side over here. Maybe this is part of the bank's logo. But anyway, the ear is on fire, and that's why all the people in the bank are running away, because they're very scared about the fire. The ear on fire is gonna help us remember otitis externa, inflammation of the external ear. But in terms of the organisms that it's effective against, let's take a look. Here we see a group of bacteria running away. We see these three pink rods over here. These rods are gonna help us remember the gram-negative rods. They're pinkish because in gram staining, they stain red due to their thin peptidoglycan wall. Fluoroquinolones are effective against gram-negative rods, such as Enterobacter and Haemophilus influenza. If you take a look closely, 
we've shaded the urinary region in this bacteria over here to help us remember specifically the gram-negative rods of urinary infections. And we've highlighted the GI system in this bacteria to help us remember that it's also effective against the gram-negative rods of the GI tract. Take a look at this guy over here. He's dropping his suit with money. Suit with money for pseudomonas. Fluoroquinolones are even effective against pseudomonas. And then we have this guy over here, the purple guy for gram-positive. Gram-positive organisms stain purple in gram staining due to their thick peptidoglycan wall. But anyway, fluoroquinolones are also effective against some gram-positive organisms. Okay, now that we spoke about clinical use, let's talk about adverse effects. And for that, we need to take a look at this fire truck over here that smashed into the bank on the way to get rid of the fire. Now this, of course, is quite unfortunate. But for us, it's good because unfortunate will help us remember adverse, adverse effects. Let's talk about it. So not only did the fire truck smash into the bank, but the fireman over here actually fell out of the truck and landed in the ground. But this is actually a lady. And how do I know that? Well, because when she landed over here, she actually gave birth and her baby flew up. Why her baby is already in fireman clothes, I don't know. But this mother who gave birth over here and whose baby is flying away is gonna help us remember two things. First of all, that fluoroquinolones are contraindicated in pregnant women. So this woman who was pregnant before is gonna help us remember that fluoroquinolones are contraindicated in pregnant women. Specifically, fluoroquinolones are considered teratogens because they can damage cartilage and ligaments. Therefore, they are not recommended for use in pregnancy. But the reason why she's giving birth in this scene is to help us remember that it's also contraindicated in babies, as well as in children who are under 18 years old. And this is also due to the possible damage to the cartilage. But let's take a look next to this mother over here. She has her pet stomach over here. She likes to bring her pet stomach with her wherever she goes. But anyway, the pet stomach is very sad that she got hurt. So this pet stomach who's very sad, or the GI that's sad, is gonna help us remember the GI upsetness. This may include things like flatulence and diarrhea. Other adverse effects include skin rashes. And we note on the mother's hands over here, we notice the skin rash. She's got a pounding headache. I mean, her head is in the ground. Why does she have a crab on her foot over here? The crab for cramps, leg cramps. Less commonly, fluoroquinolones can cause leg cramps and myalgias. Wait a second, I think I see something in the fire truck over here. Oh yeah, the grandfather likes to hang out on top of the fire truck over here and tan. He loves to get a tan, but for some reason, he likes to put the number 10 on top of him when he gets a tan. And here, the 10 also got a tan. 10 got a tan for tendon, and it's on fire to help us remember the tendonitis. Fluoroquinolones may cause tendonitis or tendon rupture in people older than 60 years old. That's why we have this old man over here to help us remember specifically in the elders. And finally, let's take a look at the bank name itself. The QT Bank. I think this is a pretty cute bank. QT Bank, with the QT that's prolonged, is gonna help us remember the prolonged QT interval. Some of the fluoroquinolones may prolong the QT interval. Let's just end off this scene with two high yield points that we wanna be aware of. The first one is that fluoroquinolones should not be taken with antacids. And this is because the absorption of fluoroquinolones is significantly impaired when co-administered with antacids. And secondly, we want to be aware of the mechanism of resistance of certain fluoroquinolones. This may include chromosome encoded mutation in the DNA gyrase, plasmid mediated resistance, as well as efflux pumps, which certain strains of bacteria have developed. All right, that's our scene on the fluoroquinolones. I hope you enjoyed. Take care.